Hello, in this video we will be considering big data, what it is, and the opportunities and threats the organisation faces due to big data. As a related topic, we will also consider data analytics, processing data to gain insight that help inform and implement organisational strategy. Let's start off by defining big data. In the modern age we are drowning in data. It is all over the place in a variety of different sources. Consider for a moment your digital footprint. You may post what you're up to today on Facebook or a photo on Instagram saying where you are, what you're doing, who you're with, the clothes you're wearing. You may also have searched online for something to buy or downloaded a book. You may have listened to some music on Spotify. You may even have spoken to appliances in your home to turn the heating on. This is in addition to all the loyalty cards you use telling vendors what your big shopping habits are. All of these things leave a trail. Big data is information such as this, scattered around the internet. What use could this be to an organisation? Before looking into potential use of big data, let's review what are its main sources. In theory, they can be grouped under the headings of social, human, machine, sensor and transactional. Social or human is a source that's becoming more and more relevant to organisations. This source includes all social media posts, video posts, postings, etc. Machine or sensor data comes from what can be measured by the equipment used. And transactional comes from the transactions which are undertaken by the organisation. This is perhaps the most traditional of the sources. A core area of theory about big data is Laney's 5 Vs. The 5 Vs help us to understand simultaneously both the advantages and the disadvantages of big data to a business. Let's work with an example as we go through the list. Imagine a business is attempting to build an accurate profile of its customers to help it plan its product range into the future. The first of the five V's is volume. There is an awful lot of this data out there. This is an opportunity because there is plenty to find out. A detailed picture could be built up of our customers to help us plan successfully for our new product range. However, there is also an issue. With so much data and information out there, it's difficult to cope with it all. We need to process all that data, and that takes time and money. We need to be smart in the way we approach this. The second of our five V's is velocity. It changes constantly. You may have posted somewhere in the last hour where you are or what you are doing. This is a great opportunity to build a remarkably current picture of you. Regular updating means we can understand what you are like now as well as what you were like. Trends can be mapped as a result. We might see, for example, you are planning to go on a walking holiday this year, and that, through analysing Facebook trends, lots of your demographic are taking this up as a new hobby. This could help inform our choices for our project product range. However, the fact that it keeps changing so quickly is also a challenge for us. Keeping pace is difficult, and the pictures we pull together of you will be very quickly out of date. Our ability to utilise current information quickly is important. The third of the five V's is variety. The information is an awful lot of different sources and in different formats. Photographs, social media postings, website cookies, GPS tracker information, emails, instant messages and so on and so on. This is good in the sense that information is a rich palette. We can build up a complex multi-dimensional hologram of you to help us plan more accurately. However, practically, it's also a problem. Trying to name and access the sources and summarise the data meaningfully is a huge challenge. Because not all of the data is readily usable in analytics, it is important to differentiate between the three types of data. Structured data is the easiest to work with. It is highly organised with dimensions defined by set parameters. Think spreadsheets. Every piece of information is grouped into rows and columns. Specific elements defined by certain variables are easily discoverable. It's all your quantitative data, for example age, billing, expenses, credit card numbers, etc. Structured data follows schemas, essentially roadmaps to specific data points. These schemas outline where each datum is and what it means. It is the easiest type of data to analyse because it requires little to no preparation before processing. 
A user might need to cleanse data and pare it down to only the relevant points, but it won't need to be interpreted or converted too deeply before a true inquiry can be performed. Unstructured data is all our unorganized data. You might be able to figure out why it constitutes so much of the modern data library. Almost everything you do with your computer generates unstructured data. No one is transcribing their phone calls or assigning semantic tags to every tweet they send. While structured data saves time in an analytical process, taking the time and effort to give unstructured data some level of readability is cumbersome. The hardest part of analysing unstructured data is teaching an application to understand the information it's, it's extracting. More often than not, this means translating it into some form of structured data. Almost universally, it involves a complex algorithm blending the processes of scanning, interpreting and contextualising functions. Semi-structured data toes the line between structured and unstructured. Most of the time, this translates to unstructured data with metadata attached to it. Let's say you take a picture of your cat from your phone. It automatically logs the time the picture was taken, the GPS data at the time of the capture and your device ID. If you're using any kind of web service for storage, like iCloud, your account info becomes attached to the file. Semi-structured data has no set schema. This can be both a benefit and a challenge. It can be more difficult to work with because effort must be put in to tell the application what each data point means. The second classification of data is based on its measurement levels. In this respect, there is a difference between categorical and numerical data. Categorical data describes the categories or groups. One example is car brands like Mercedes, BMW and Audi. They show different categories. Numerical data, on the other hand, as its name suggests, represents numbers. It is further divided into two subsets, discrete and continuous. Discrete data can usually be counted in a finite matter. A good example would be the number of children that you want to have. Continuous data is infinite and impossible to count. For instance, your weight can take on every value in some range. The fourth of the five V's is veracity. It means accuracy and truthfulness and relates to the quality of the data. If we want any analysis to provide useful findings for decision making, the data collected must be true. But how is this done in practice? To assess how true the data collected is, companies must consider not only how accurate or reliable a data set might be, but also how trusted is the source of the data. They must be able to trust the source of the data being collected and be confident that the data is reliable and accurate if they are to base important and often costly decisions on the findings of its analysis. The difficulty that companies face here is that by its very nature, the data collected comes from many different sources. Take, for example, data from social media. They can be easily manipulated, particularly given the recent increase in so-called fake news and growing reports of deliberately manipulated customer reviews on retail sites. The final of the five V's is value. There is little point in going to the effort and expense of gathering and analysing the data if it does not ultimately result in adding value to the company. This is why it is important for companies to consider the potential of big data analytics and the value it could create if gathered, analysed and used wisely. In fact, each of the five V's is a huge challenge. However, the prizes are potentially huge. It can be a source of competitive advantage. If we can understand our customers better than others, we stand a good chance of making better decisions as a business. The challenges can seem overwhelming, but remember this, no one said this needs to be mastered perfectly, as indeed it cannot be mastered perfectly. You just need to do a better job at it than your competitors. Another concept related to this topic is the Big Data, or DIKW, pyramid. It is also known as the Knowledge Pyramid and explains the relationship between data, information, knowledge and wisdom. A range of raw data could be collected from various sources. For example, a company collects a range of data from previous purchases, customer questionnaires or social media posts. The raw data can be analysed to look for trends or patterns, 
For example, it may appear there is a link between the purchase of a particular product and a particular group of customers. This is information. In the next step, the company analyzes information further to establish how the identified links are connected. Knowing the details of exactly what types of customers buy a particular product or favor particular products features is knowledge. Finally, the knowledge gathered can be used to make informed business decisions, and this is wisdom. For example, a company could adapt the packaging of its products to the tastes of different customer groups. Big data raises difficult ethical questions. Some people have a Big Brother style concern about businesses building detailed profiles of us, as well as potentially about legal concerns relating to data protection. Both of these risks carry associated reputation risks if our use of big data becomes public knowledge and it isn't received well. Also, increasing linkages with external data sources increases the risk of viruses infecting our systems. So big data is not without its risks and problems, but it has a huge upside potential. Data analytics is concerned with processing data to gain new insights that hopefully can be used to inform decisions in the organization. It may inform decisions to what we make, how we sell it, and who we sell it to, for example. This is not a new idea. Even before the days of big data, organizations were exploiting their internal data resources by consolidating them into one place, known as a data warehouse, and analyzing it to their advantage. One such example of an analytical procedure is data mining. A data mine is a piece of software that burrows into a set of data and notes apparent relationships between data items and tells you what it's found. A finding may or may not be useful. For example, it may say when sales increase, costs tend to increase, or when sales increase, profits tend to increase. Well, you may well have known this anyway. However, on occasion, it may just tell you something you didn't know and that you can exploit to your advantage. Another thing to mention is predictive analysis. This is a type of data mining which aims to predict future events. For example, the chance of someone being persuaded to upgrade the flight. When analyzing data, it is possible to use both descriptive and inferential statistics in our analysis. Descriptive statistics is the term given to the analysis of data that helps describe, show, or summarize data in a meaningful way such that, for example, patterns might emerge from the data. It does not, however, allow us to make conclusions beyond the data we have analysed or reach conclusions regarding any hypothesis we might have made. They are simply a way to describe our data. For example, if we had the results of 100 pieces of students' coursework, we may be interested in the overall performance of those students. We would also be interested in the distribution or spread of the marks. Descriptive statistics allow us to do this by using a combination of tabulated description, such as tables, graphical description, such as graphs and charts, and statistical commentary, uh, such as a discussion of the results. Inferential statistics are techniques that allow us to use these samples to make generalizations about the populations from which the samples were drawn. It is therefore important that the sample accurately represents the population. The process of achieving this is called sampling inferential statistics and arises out of the fact that sampling naturally incurs sampling error and thus the sample is not expected to be perfectly representative of the population. In conclusion, as we've discussed, businesses create an advantage through exploiting core competencies and unique resources. Big data and how it is an analysed can help improve the quality of decisions made in the organisation enhancing the value added by the business. The organisational processes related to big data, therefore, in themselves become a dimension of competition. If we can deal with it better than our competitors, we will gain an advantage over them as a result. Thanks for listening.